Welcome to the Canadian edition of The Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Andrew, I just want to say thank you so much. You were such a blessing to me. He made it simple. I think I really needed to see that. You have shown me and taught me his love. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. This week I've started a teaching that I've entitled Lessons from Joseph, and I'm just taking the life of Joseph and going through what God did with him and making applications to us. And uh, we've already covered some really, really important things. I've got this little booklet that is just a brief summary of this larger teaching. This is a brand new book, first time we've released this, and it's Lessons from Joseph. It's 200 plus pages. We're asking for a donation of any amount for this. There is a suggested donation for those of you that wonder what we would like to get for it. And so we have a suggested donation, but then we'll give this to you as a free gift. And then we have CDs and DVDs that were taken from our television program and a USB that will have the audio and video on it. And we'll give out that information again at the end of the program. So we started in Genesis chapter 37 about how Joseph was given these two dreams from God that he would be exalted and people would come and bow down to him. And God gave these to him to protect him and to keep him in hope, even though there was going to be a lot of negative things happen to him. I do not believe God is the source of these negative things. It does say that God sold him into slavery. Jo Joseph said that himself, that God sent me ahead to preserve life, but it was because of the alternatives. What was the alternatives? The brothers were going to try and kill him, and they threw him into a pit and eventually sold him to these people, and Joseph became a slave. But that wasn't because that God wanted him to be a slave. It was because he got him away from his brothers. His brothers were going to kill him. And his father, Jacob, thought he had been killed by some animal because they took his coat of many colors, which was very unique to Joseph, put animal's blood on it, and Jacob just assumed that he had been killed by animals. And so for 22 years, he grieved over a situation that wasn't even accurate. It wasn't even true what he was grieving over. So the story continues when Joseph gets down into Egypt, and in Genesis chapter 39, Verse 1, it says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And look at this. This is one of my favorite scriptures in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. It says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. That is just amazing right there. Most people would not have had this uh, take on the situation. Joseph had been the favorite son of a very wealthy man, Jacob. He had this coat of many colors. He lived in luxury. He was pampered by his father. But because his brothers tried to kill him and eventually sold him into slavery, here Joseph was standing on an auction block being sold into slavery. And did you know that the way they sold a slave was they stripped you naked? And he had his clothes, his whatever clothes were left, because his coat of many colors had been taken from him. So whatever clothes he had, they were just in a pile beside him. So here Joseph is standing there totally naked so that the buyers could see what they were buying. And God says, Joseph was a prosperous man. I can imagine Potiphar standing there in all of his robes, and he probably had jewels and gold and rings and all kinds of things, and he looked like a prosperous man. Most people would think Potiphar was prosperous. Here's Joseph being sold, sold stripped naked as a slave, and he wouldn't be considered a prosperous man. But when God wrote about it, God says Joseph was a prosperous man, not Potiphar. Boy, this is powerful. Did you know God sees things? differently than we see things. And this is one of the big problems. How can two walk together except they be agreed is what the Scripture says. And the fact is most of us are so carnal. We just look at things in the natural. We look at our situation and we don't properly evaluate things. 
But I tell you, you've got to get to where you see things the way that God sees things. And that's the reason that He gave us this Word. This is the reason He gave us stories like this about Joseph, is to show us that it doesn't matter how people see you. It doesn't matter what your circumstances look like. What does God say about you? You know, I can remember back when Jamie and I were going through our poverty days, and this was totally my fault. God's not the one who put me in this poverty. Now, God used it, and I learned a lot of things. And today, I am still thankful. You know, last week, I had to go do some shopping for Jamie at the grocery store. I don't hardly ever do that, but she wanted something, and I went to get it. And uh, I, as I was buying these few little items that I had, I remember being in grocery stores when Jamie and I couldn't buy hardly anything. We were starving, and we would go look at all of this food, and we couldn't get any of it. And I remember just last week, I mean, 50-something years later, here I am, and I'm still thankful. And I remember walking through that grocery store and just thanking the Lord. Thank you, Father, that we have the money, that we can buy whatever it is that we need. So God used it. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, it wasn't something that the Lord used in my life, but it wasn't God's will that I went through that poverty. That was my own stupidity. I was told by someone that if you were called to minister, that you would be sinning against God to go get a job because you were called to the ministry and you should get your money from the ministry. And so because of that wrong thinking, I refused to work for about the first five years of our marriage. And boy, Jamie and I went through poverty and through a lot of things, and it was my own fault. Now, God used it, and I'm thankful that I learned some lessons through it, but that wasn't God's will. And did you know it wasn't God? This wasn't God's original plan, I believe, for Joseph. Nevertheless, it was better than what the brothers were wanting to do to him, killing him, and so God sold him into slavery. But the anointing of God was on Joseph. Joseph had already been shown through those two dreams that he was going to be exalted and that people would come bow down to him. And because of that, Joseph was still standing in faith, even though he was standing there stripped naked, being sold into slavery. Joseph was a prosperous man. You have to be able to see yourself the way that God sees you, and you have to see it on the inside before you see it on the outside. You know, back during those poverty days that I was describing just a few minutes ago, Jamie and I could have gone on welfare. We could have gotten uh, food stamps uh, for I, probably the first 10 years of our marriage. We were that poor, and yet I never saw myself poor. I was preaching prosperity. I was preaching that God would supply my needs even though I couldn't see it in my life. I could see it to a degree, like we would have the doorbell ring and we'd go and nobody would be there and there'd be a sack of groceries and I'd look both ways down the street and I couldn't see anybody. Uh, God provided miracles. I mean, at the last moment, our finances had come through, but it was a struggle. And so I could see some victory in this area, but certainly I, nobody would have called me prosperous. We were actually evicted from uh, places that we live because we couldn't pay the rent. We were threatened to come in and seize all of our stuff. We were struggling. I saw enough supply that I knew that God was for me. And anyway, even though we were struggling in the natural, I never saw myself poor. I never applied for food stamps. I never did those things, even though I could have. And it wasn't that I was afraid to do it or I was embarrassed to do it. I honestly did not see myself poor. I saw myself blessed. I knew that God's anointing was on me. I knew I had a vision from God that someday I would be prosperous and I would be doing things. And I never saw myself poor, even though we were definitely poor. I didn't see myself that way. There are people watching this program right now that you may be in a situation where in the natural you are poor, but you don't have to see yourself poor. You could be like Joseph and be a prosperous man even when you're standing there stripped naked being sold into slavery. There may be some of you that in the natural it looks like you're dying, but you don't have to see yourself dying. You can see yourself the healed. You can take the Word of God and see yourself the way that God tells you you're, you're supposed to be. You could be in situations where in the natural it looks like that there's no promotion, that there's no way things are going to work out, and yet you can see yourself a prosperous person on the inside. 
There's some people watching this program right now that this is just crazy to you. How can you see something when your circumstances are saying that? I'm saying this in love, but you're what the Bible calls carnal. Most people think carnal is something evil. It's terrible. Well, it is bad, but not only, you know, murder and things like that are carnal, but when you are just controlled by what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, your five senses, that's what the Bible's calling carnal. A person who is limited to only uh, thinking what reality is, is what you see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, this natural realm. If you're spiritual, you can go beyond the physical things that may look contrary, and you can take the Word of God, and you can have a picture painted on the inside of you of what God wants to do in your life, and you can grab hold of that, and you can see yourself prosperous when the world sees you a slave. You can see yourself healed when the world sees you sick. Boy, this is great. I, again, I could talk about this for a long time, but this is one of my favorite scriptures where here's Joseph being sold into slavery, and the Lord says, Joseph was a very prosperous man. Didn't say that about Potiphar. If you're just looking in the natural, Potiphar was a thousand times, a million times more prosperous than Joseph. But in God's eyes, Joseph was the prosperous person, not Potiphar. You know, it really doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about you. What God thinks about you is what's important. You've got to get to a place to where you have a relationship with God. You take the Word of God and what God says about you, that you are the righteousness of God. You've got to see yourself that way, regardless of what's happened in the past. There are some people that let their past just dominate their present. But when you come to the Lord, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And you are now created in righteousness and true holiness, Ephesians 4, 24. Jesus has become your righteousness. And you need to see yourself the way that God sees you. You don't need to limp through life always burdened down and bearing shame by what you've done before you came to the Lord. You're a brand new person, and you need to see yourself that way. And this is what happened to Joseph. You know, again, this story, I'm reading between the lines, but I believe that these things are absolutely true. If you would meditate on it, you can see it. Because it goes on to say in the next verse, in verse 3, it says, And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. This wasn't something that had no bearing on reality. It, it, was to, it was, wasn't disconnected from reality because Joseph saw himself prosperous, because he knew that God was with him, because he had this vision that someday he was going to be exalted and people would come and bow down to him. Because of that, Joseph was still trusting God and believing God and submitted to God. And it was so obvious that his master, Potiphar, who bought him, saw that God was with him. I tell you, if you can see it on the inside, it will eventually begin to manifest itself on the outside, and other people will see it. There's some people that are probably skeptics that are watching this program and thinking, you're just in la-la land. You're thinking that if you just see yourself this way, and, and you're, you're going to live the rest of your life and live a total defeated life, and yet you just see yourself differently on the inside. That's the way a skeptic would look at it. But I'm telling you that if you truly embrace God's plan for your life, and if you truly see it on the inside, it will manifest itself on the outside. Just like Potiphar, he saw that Joseph was blessed, and whatever he set his hand unto, uh, God would make it to prosper in his hand. And so because of that, in verse 4, it says, And Joseph found grace in his sight, talking about Potiphar's sight, his master, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hands. Again, you don't do this to a person who's going around griping and complaining and murmuring and just bitter and depressed and discouraged because of the bad things that have happened to him. You don't put a person like that in charge of your whole household. And it goes on to say, so that he didn't even know anything that was going on. He trusted Joseph so much 
that he didn't even know what was going on. Just the food that he ate is about all that he had to do. In verse 5, it says, It came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer over his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. You don't put a person in charge like that. And this says that he didn't know anything about his business, about his finances. The only thing that Potiphar knew was the bread that he ate. He trusted Joseph that much. You don't do that to a person who's griping and complaining and depressed and sitting there sucking his thumb and talking about how everything's against him. And I'm saying this in love again, but there are some people that you've had some bad things happen to you. You might have caused them. You might not have caused them. Maybe they were things that were done to you without your cooperation. I don't know. But if you are responding negatively to it, and if you've let these negative circumstances depress you and make you to where you have no hope for the future, and you're just sitting there murmuring and complaining, you have become a victim, not a victor. But it doesn't matter what anybody else has done to you. You always have a choice of whether you become bitter or better. And I know that I'm, some people are really being offended by what I'm saying because it's like I'm not embracing your situation. I'm coming against your feelings of failure and depression, and you feel justified in doing all of that. But I tell you, if you do that, you'll never get promoted. You'll never get out of that situation. You are letting your circumstances dominate you. You can go to the Word of God, especially those of you who've made Jesus your Lord. I guarantee you Jesus has a path plotted out of the situation you are in to total victory. And it doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter how bad it is. You may think your situation is worse than everybody else, but see, that's one of the problems because it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there is no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So if you're sitting there feeling totally hopeless and helpless and you're feeling justified in being depressed, then you have violated that scripture. You've given away your hope. You need to come back to a place to where you say, God, I don't care what happens. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment I shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and my righteousness is of you, thus saith the Lord. And so you need to get that attitude, and you need to recognize it doesn't matter what has happened to you. God has a path planned out of that situation into total victory. Praise God. Man, I just know in my heart that God is speaking to many people. This is bringing you out of that funk that you're in. You need to get over it, and you need to be like Joseph. He had been the favorite son. He was raised in wealth. Now he is a slave. It, most people would have justified him sitting down and just giving up. What's the use? What's the purpose in dreams? Look where it's got me. But no, he held on to that vision, and it says that he served Potiphar. Most people that are really depressed, they don't serve anybody else. They just, un, they just unplug, they uh, check out of society, and they're just sitting there in the dark nursing all of their hurts and pains. I'm telling you, the way out is for you to serve somebody else, for you to take. I don't care what's come against you, you there's still something you can do. You could still be a blessing to somebody, and you just start serving people, and you say, I'm not going to be in this situation forever. And you may not be able to do the great things, but you can do something. And you start serving. You start blessing other people. Get out of just focusing on yourself and thinking about your problem and go to thinking about somebody else. This is what Joseph did. In a situation that most people would have given up, he was serving Potiphar. And because of it, Potiphar promoted him. And so he was beginning to see success. He was beginning to see some good things. But... The devil didn't just roll over and play dead because he endured the very first thing that was thrown at him. Now the master's wife came against him. You know, we just read it right here. It says, 
that he was a goodly person and well favored. That's King James English for saying he was a very handsome man. He was, he was, uh, you know, a good looking guy. And because of that, the next verse says it came to pass after these things, his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. Talking about having sexual relationship. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in his house than I neither hath he kept back from me anything but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Boy, this is one of the passages of Scripture that the Lord has used in my life big time. I'm not going to be able to say everything I want to say about this on today's program. I'm going to continue this into tomorrow's program. But let me just say that just because Joseph was able to endure the mistreatment from his brothers being sold into slavery. And now here he's a, a slave and he had, he had fallen from being a, a, the favorite son of a wealthy person to now being a slave. Even though he had endured that, that didn't mean that the test was over. Satan will throw wave after wave after wave of things at you. Some people might stand one time because they've got a vision that they think that they can go through this and that they're, they're going to come out better on the other side. But there's very few people that will stand wave after wave after wave, assault after assault after assault of the devil. You know, the scripture talks about you've got to have patience and let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. You can't put limits on things. I've known people that says, all right, I'm going to stand and as long as it's minor things that come against me, as long as it's temporary things, as long as it's a short duration of struggle that I have to go through, then they will stand through that. But they have limits to how far they will go. Did you know if you have a limit on how much uh, opposition you're going to endure, Satan will push you to that limit every time. He knows where your limits are. He knows where you're ready to just quit, and throw in the towel and give in. And he will push you until the very brink of that. It's actually to your advantage just to make a decision that, you know what? There are no limits. I am not going to quit. I don't care what happens. When you do that, you actually will see a breakthrough quicker because Satan will know that he hadn't got a chance. And Satan at heart is a coward. The only reason he'll fight you is if he thinks he's got a chance of you giving in. And so Joseph didn't just stand through you know, the brother's rejection and then being sold into slavery. But boy, he stood even when he was again promoted to another position. Here comes the master's wife trying to seduce him and he refused to give in on that. And man, I've got some great things to say about this. Some things that the Lord spoke to me that has protected me and made a huge difference in my life and the same thing will work for you. But I'm going to have to do that on tomorrow's program. I am giving away this little booklet, and this is a 50-page introduction to this teaching on Lessons from Joseph. And then I have this brand new book, the first time that we've put this out, Lessons from Joseph. It's a 200-page book. We are asking for a donation of any amount. We have a suggested donation, but if you'll send something, we'll send this to you. We'll send this little booklet to you whether you send anything or not. That's a free gift. And then we have CDs and DVDs and a USB that will have the audio and video on it. So listen to our announcer as he gives you all of this information and then please call or write today to receive these materials. Andrew is offering his booklet, Lessons from Joseph, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Lessons from Joseph, is available as a book, newly updated CD album, TV, DVD album, and USB made from our daily television broadcast. 
Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download, absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $135. Go to our website at awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I want to let all of you know who are watching our program in Canada that we have a Canadian office. We also have a website, awmc.ca, and you can go there and you can get all of our materials sent to you from our Canadian office. You can become a partner with us and give, and the money will stay right there to help us reach people in Canada. We would love to help you and minister to you any way we can. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. You can listen to them while you're online or download them for later and listen on the go. Remember, that's awmc.ca. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you today. Harris is taking it to the next level in Canada. We are raising up leaders in the body of Christ by equipping students to stand on the word and walk in their calling. I love Karis because it prioritizes the word and that's what changes you. We stand on the word. Karis is a life changer. I have grown so much in the area that I know that God has called me to. If you would like to be a part of this, go to our website at karisbiblecollege.ca to find out more. On March 23, 1968, Andrew Womack received a dramatic revelation from the Lord. Since then, Andrew's ministry has grown to reaching over 5 billion people worldwide through his daily television broadcasts. As we continue to expand Andrew's vision through television, our partners have enabled us to produce the Gospel Truth program in Spanish. We're reaching new Spanish-speaking audiences with the message of God's unconditional love and grace. Andrew Womack Ministries is not only reaching the world through television, but also through Karis Bible College. Andrew has Karis Bible College locations in multiple countries around the world. Our international Karis locations are discipling students with the life-changing Word of God in their own language. Andrew's teachings have been translated into 32 different languages. Andrew Womack Ministries is committed to seeing that every country, culture, and tongue come to know the saving power of Jesus Christ. If you aren't already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner by visiting our website at awmc.ca. While you're there, you can learn more about all the things God is doing through this ministry. Become a partner with us today and help share the gospel around the world. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? We pray that we can bless you with the Word of God wherever you are in the world on any of these platforms. Follow Andrew on social media today.